So today is the 13th of February. As you can see, I've got my bicycle and my bicycle trailer all rigged up and we're gonna go for a trip to the grocery store. So it's a nice warm sunny day today. Uh, so I decided that today was a pretty good day to go and get stocked up on some grocery items. Uh, as you can see, it's nice and bright outside and uh, a few clouds in the sky, but uh, not that cold, not very much wind. Uh, it's about negative five Celsius. It's not, you know, particularly extremely warm or anything, but compared to, you know, the cold snap that we were having the last few weeks, it's quite mild for February. So you can probably hear the clattering noises of my trailer when I go over all these big potholes and cracks in the road. Uh, it's, it is a fairly noisy trailer. Um, it's, I don't think it's because it's poorly made or anything, it's just because the way that it's made it so you can be really nicely foldable. You can, you know, it folds up pretty small. I normally just keep it inside of my closet and, uh, you know, the wheels come off and everything. And uh, due to being made that way, with all of those pivoting parts, there's a little bit of play in all of them, which means that they rattle and rock and stuff when you're not riding on a perfectly flat road. And this road is a very good example of a, a road that's not flat at all. Um, this is actually part of the route that I take for getting to work. I'm riding up duplex right now. So I've made videos before showing my, uh, my trailer. I actually made a video right when I first got it. And I think, I believe I got it in uh, 2011, the fall of 2011. It's now the winter 2014. So um, it's now been, I guess, a little bit over uh, two and a half years. But even though I do almost all of my transportation, uh, by bicycle, I find that I really don't actually use my trailer that much. It's kind of just a, a nice backup to have if you if you know there's something big you got to carry. It's nice to have it there to use, but I find that I really don't actually use it on a monthly basis or anything like that. Uh, from getting my groceries most of the time, uh, there's quite a few grocery stores that are between my work and where my apartment is. So I ride that route every single day. And if there's, you know, as I'm, you know, doing my cooking and stuff at home, when I start to realize that I'm getting short on an item, I'll just kind of make a mental note of that. And then the next day when I'm going home, I'll stop in at one of the grocery stores and, you know, pick up whatever I need to get. And that does a pretty good job of keeping my, the stock of stuff in my kitchen replenished. Well, I should correct that, however. I mean, it does a pretty good job of uh, keeping my my fresh produce kind of stuff uh, properly stocked, um, but it's not so great at keeping my non-perishable kind of stuff, like, you know, soups and frozen stuff and, you know, condiments and stuff like that. I don't find that I do as good a job of keeping those, you know, pr properly fully stocked throughout the weeks. Uh, because I really don't have a ton of space for carrying a whole lot of stuff um, on my, my daily commutes. Um, I got my, my milk crate, which um, I'll show you in a moment, which has a fair bit of space in it, but usually when I'm commuting, I already have inside that uh, my backpack, which has, you know, my bike tools and my, you know, my stuff for my lunch and my, some clothes for commuting and stuff like that. That takes up quite a bit of my, milk crate space and then uh, doesn't leave a whole lot of extra space for uh, filling it with extra groceries. So every now and again I find it worthwhile to take the trailer to the grocery store and just do a big shopping trip and get all stocked up on that stuff, fill up my shelves and then not have to worry about it for a while. So that's what I'm doing today. So the grocery store that I'm going to is my 
one of my grocery stores of choice. It's a, a discount one. It's pr pretty reasonably priced. They sell pretty good stuff. Uh, the store is called No Frills. If you're from Canada or certain parts of Canada, you're probably familiar with No Frills. It's an interesting name for a grocery store. Um, the name means that, you know, they don't spend any money on making things look pretty and fancy and frilly like the frills in the name. They, uh, you know, they're saying they don't waste their money on that. They just give you the lowest price possible and don't make you pay for the frills, basically. So we're almost there. Uh, I just gotta get to the top of this hill and then I'll be in the parking lot and then I'll go inside. So I've got my bike and trailer all locked up here and I'm just gonna grab a cart and go inside and do my shopping. All right, so all my shopping's done. Here's all the stuff that I bought. Uh, that's $102.90 worth of groceries. Um, actually, the last time that I did one of these big hauls, uh, big grocery hauls with my trailer, uh, the, the bill was about $153. And uh, that actually lasted me about 10 months. So hopefully this load will last me uh, just about as long um, before I need to do another one of these big loads. Uh, I actually ended up buying a bit more than I had anticipated. Uh, the thing is there's a, there's a lot of things that were on sale and usually when things are on sale and all I have for carrying stuff is this little milk crate here, um, I don't really take advantage of those sales. I'm not really able to take advantage of those sales. Maybe I'll buy an, an extra one of the that particular item that I want. Uh, but when I have the trailer, of course, I want to take full advantage of it and I'll buy, you know, three or four of whatever's on sale. So now the next challenge is trying to get all this to fit inside the trailer here. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it to fit. If, if some fit, stuff doesn't fit in there, I always have a little bit of extra space in there uh, for keeping stuff. Well, that fit in there actually quite easily. There's actually, I was really worried that I wasn't gonna have enough space to be able to fit it all in, but as you can see, there's like plenty of extra space in there as well. So I could have bought more if I wanted to. Another thing I wanted to mention is this trailer actually comes with a cover that can go over it. It stretches around the edges and covers up the top, and that would have been perfect for today uh, to be able to make sure that everything stays inside the trailer. Uh, but unfortunately, I left that I'm at home before I came here, so I've just got to make sure that you know nothing bounces out when I go over those bumps and potholes and stuff. So now I'm just going to return my cart, and then I'm going to hop on the bike and ride back home. And I do have my uh, Contour Roam camera mounted on the back there, so I'll give you a high-speed version of uh, looking back at the trailer as I ride through the streets. All right, so I made it back safe and sound, and I think I still got all of my cargo intact in there. Um, I did actually hit quite a few bumps. I found that uh, you know a lot of cars weren't really giving me very much space, and they were you know trying to pass me on the left when they really didn't have enough room to, which you know forced me to to drift over to the right a little bit. And then a few times, you know, my trailer was was hitting into the snow banks, which really wasn't very good. And I also didn't have very much mobility in terms of avoiding the potholes. I definitely was going quite slow compared to how fast I would normally go uh, because the trailer really was, you know, loading me down and, and, and keeping me from going super fast. I found that the trailer is actually quite a bit quieter uh, when it's loaded up because um, I guess there's enough weight pushing down on it that uh, keeps all of those little joints I was describing before um, from, from, from moving around too much when you're, when you're riding with it. As I was mentioning, I definitely can feel the pull from the trailer 
uh, when it's loaded up and I'm riding with it. It really does, you know, put quite a bit of extra load on the pedals when I'm, you know, trying to trying to push and trying to ride the bike, particularly on, you know, the, the uphill. It's just a, it's a gradual uphill. You really notice the trailer is really, you know, dragging you back. Um, whereas when I'm riding with it, when the trailer's um, empty, I almost don't even notice that I have the trailer on. It really doesn't, you know, cause much of an effect on how much effort I have to put into pulling uh, with my pedals. Um, if, if the trailer, when it's empty, didn't make the rattling noise, I might almost forget that I'm even pulling it. Alright, so my next step is to take the trailer um, up to my apartment and uh, unfortunately the, it's really difficult to bring the bike and the trailer and the elevator at the same time. Uh, so I usually just leave the, take them up in separate trips. So I'm just going to leave the bike here and lock it up and then bring the trailer up. And uh, one of the beautiful things about having a trailer like this uh, for doing your grocery shopping is you can actually wheel this right into the kitchen and then you can just basically unload it directly from the trailer into the cupboards or into the into the fridge or wherever you have to put all those groceries. Well anyway, I hope you've enjoyed joining me on this little trip to the grocery store with my bike and bike trailer. Um, as you saw, it is quite convenient having a bike trailer like that uh, for doing the bigger kind of shopping trips that you need to do every so often. When you have a bike and bike trailer like that, there really is not a whole lot that you can't carry. Stay tuned to my channel for more videos about carrying cargo with a bicycle, and thanks for watching.